super fast super luxurious and super expensive High performance SUVs were once fairly rare. Not anymore. These SUVs have become increasingly popular. Thanks to their combination of power, luxury interior, and high tech features. Intense performance and dominating design come to life in a high power super sport utility vehicles. They offer incredible space, comfort, and performance in one complete package. I have compiled a list of top 10 best high performance SUVs for the money, in my opinion. Stay with me, as I break down the numbers. Please subscribe, and turn on the notification so you won't miss any new video. Thank you. Audi SQ8 is the flagship SUV from the German luxury brand. Introduced last year as a luxury high-performance SUV coupe. It's above the Audi Q8 and under the ultra-performance RS Q8. While the eyes of most fast SUV fans might be on the hot RS Q8. Don't sleep on the SQ8. It offers the perfect balance of performance and functionality. SQ8 competes against the segment leaders such as the Porsche Cayenne GTS Coupe and the Mercedes-AMG GLE 53 Coupe. Audi SQ8 comes in two trim levels, Premium Plus and Prestige. Both trims use a 4.0-liter twin-turbocharged V8, 500 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque, paired to 8-speed automatic transmission with Quattro all-wheel drive system, and Sprint 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. Top speed, 130 miles per hour. As is typical of Audi's S models, the interior gains more standard features and fancier materials than the base Q8. This includes black accents in the cabin, diamond-stitched seats, optional carbon fiber trim, and contrast stitching. Audi decks out every SQ8 with a dual touchscreen infotainment system and the brand's virtual cockpit, reconfigurable gauge display. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a Wi-Fi hotspot are standard. With seating for five, the front seats are comfortable and supportive. There's excellent legroom, spacious back seats, and ample headroom. Safety and driver assistance features include 
standard forward collision warning, with automated emergency braking, standard blind spot monitoring, with rear cross traffic alert, available adaptive cruise control, with a semi-autonomous driving mode, SQ8 safety crash test rating, has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, the SQ8 major downsides are, the infotainment system can be distracting to use. The fuel economy isn't great. And driver's seat has few adjustments. Mercedes AMG GLE 53 Coupe, was built to exploit. Its name makes its mission clear, it's a vehicle for anyone, who wants a Mercedes AMG version, but can't stretch for a V8-powered 63S model, and those drawn to SUVs, that looks like a coupe. It offers massive dollops of power, from its 3.0-liter turbocharged inline-six, which is helped along by a mild hybrid system. Powered by a 3.0-liter turbo inline-six, 429 horsepower, and 384 pound-feet of torque. With EQ Boost Electric System, providing an additional 21 horsepower, and 184 pound-feet. Paired to 9-speed automatic transmission, with 4-matic all-wheel drive system. And Sprint 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. Top speed, 155 miles per hour. The interior of the GLE 53 Coupe, like other AMG products, is a stylish, and comfortable place to be in. AMG has done well to combine luxury, and sportiness here. The seats are comfortable, and supportive. The system in the GLE 53 Coupe, features dual 12.3-inch displays, which are the centerpieces of the interior, with MBUX interface. The system is controlled by natural voice recognition, a touchpad controller, steering wheel controls, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Sirius XM satellite radio, are all standard, while a 4G Wi-Fi is optional. Safety and driver assistance features include, standard automated emergency braking, with pedestrian detection, standard blind spot monitoring, with rear cross traffic alert, available adaptive cruise control, with semi-autonomous driving mode, GLE 53 Coupe Safety Crash Test Rating, has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, GLE 53 Coupe major downsides are, roofline compromises backseat headroom, on-road performance abilities, limit off-road capability,
Porsche Cayenne GTS Coupe is a performance-oriented variant of the mid-size luxury Cayenne SUV that is differentiated by its sloped roof. The Cayenne GTS Coupe is one of the few SUVs that can rival a high-performance sports car in handling and acceleration capability. The Cayenne GTS Coupe is more than a fashion statement, it's a proclamation of exceptional SUV performance. Powered by 4.0-liter twin-turbocharged V8, 453 horsepower, and 457 pound-feet of torque. Paired to 8-speed automatic transmission, with all-wheel drive. And sprint 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. Top speed, 167 miles per hour. With loads of technology, contemporary design, excellent comfort, build quality, and beautiful materials, highlight the GTS Coupe interior, as do the intelligent layout of its controls, and the comfortable seats, that feature both ample support, and adjustability. But the best of what the Cayenne Coupe has to offer, is found among its many optional features, and packages, which can elevate the price quickly. The highlight of the dashboard is a large 12.3-inch high-resolution touchscreen, which is centrally located and easy to access. Apple CarPlay, Wi-Fi hotspot, and navigation are standard. Android Auto is not available. Safety and driver assistance features include, standard forward collision warning, and automated emergency braking. Available lane departure warning, and lane keeping assist. Available adaptive cruise control. Cayenne GTS Coupe Safety Crash Test Rating, has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, Cayenne GTS Coupe major downsides are, premium product, with premium pricing. Coupe delivers slightly reduced headroom in rear seats. And no Android Auto integration. The Range Rover Sport SVR, is a well-balanced luxury sport midsize SUV. It's one step down both in size and price, from the magnificent Range Rover, but still has a lot of that vehicle's authoritative presence. The SVR has plenty of competition, from the likes of BMW, Mercedes-AMG, and Porsche. But what makes the Range Rover Sport SVR special, is how easily it can transition from back-road pounder, to off-road superstar. Powered by a 5.0-liter supercharged V8, 575 horsepower, and 516 pound-feet of torque. Paired to 8-speed automatic transmission, with all-wheel drive. And sprint 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. Top speed, 176 miles per hour.
The SVR boasts a top-notch interior, and most surfaces are trimmed with high-end materials, like sumptuous leather, aluminum, massaging front seats, and four-zone automatic climate control. The driver's seat is supportive, and brings the commanding view, for which Range Rovers are known for, and the second row seat is comfortable. The optional third row is for kids only. The SVR comes standard, with a dual 10-inch infotainment system. The lower screen handles vehicle functions, such as climate control, and drive mode settings, while the upper one provides access to music, navigation, and communication. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, are all standard. Safety and driver assistance features include, standard automated emergency braking, available lane keeping assist, available adaptive cruise control. The Range Rover Sport SVR safety crash test rating, has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, the Sport SVR major downsides are, rivals have superior reliability history, and cost less. European contenders, are tech rich and less expensive. If both stomach clenching performance and catching people's attention, are highly important to you. The BMW X6M competition will not disappoint. It separates itself from the regular X6, with a mean looking muscular body style, and insane 617 horsepower. While the six figure price, might seem excessive. Don't forget that BMW was responsible for the original coupe SUV. The German automaker, now also has to match up against Olympic level competitors, in the performance SUV segment, such as the Porsche Cayenne Coupe, and Mercedes AMG GLE Coupe. Thankfully for fans of the iconic roundel, the X6M competition has the blistering acceleration, sports car-like handling, and flashy styling to match them. Powered by a 4.4-liter twin-turbo V8. Produces 617 horsepower, and 553 pound-feet of torque. Paired to 8-speed Steptronic automatic transmission, with X-Drive all-wheel drive system. And sprint 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Top speed, 155 miles per hour. Sportiness and luxuriousness collide inside the X6M competition, which boasts carbon fiber accents, and standard leather upholstery. There's also no shortage of high-tech features, thanks to a 12.3-inch fully digital gauge cluster, and a large head-up display. Those are accompanied by niceties, such as ambient interior lighting, massaging front seats, with heated and cooled surfaces, heated rear seats, and more. 
A large 12.3-inch touchscreen infotainment system adorns the center of the dash on the X6M competition. It uses BMW's latest iDrive software and can also be operated via hand gestures, voice commands, and a center console controller. The standout standard features include Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a Harman or Kardon sound system. Safety and driver assistance features include standard forward collision warning and automated emergency braking, standard lane departure warning and lane keeping assist, and available adaptive cruise control with stop and go technology. The X6M competition safety crash test rating has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, X6M competition major downsides are distinctive styling limits rear headroom and cargo capacity. Compromised rear visibility. Let's just take a moment to compliment Aston Martin on building an SUV that actually shares a familial resemblance to the company's sports cars. The DBX shares a lot of its styling elements, like the one-piece taillight bar, borrowed from the Vantage. Aston Martin DBX is the legendary British sports car automaker's first-ever SUV and one of just a few exotic branded SUVs on the market. The company best known for supplying James Bond with his wheels, now aims to capitalize on the hugely popular crossover SUVs market that has already seduced iconic rivals such as Lamborghini with its wild Urus SUV. While the DBX doesn't have the Lambo's extroverted styling, it delivers its own brand of beauty. It also drives with the same liveliness and grace that Aston Martin is known for. Plus, the DBX can be taken off-road and tow heavy loads. For shoppers looking for an exotic crossover SUV, with a balanced blend of performance and comfort. The DBX should be on your list. Powered by a 4.0-liter twin-turbo V8, 542 horsepower, and 516 pound-feet of torque. Paired to 9-speed automatic transmission, with standard all-wheel drive. And sprint 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. Top speed, 181 miles per hour. All the right materials are present inside the DBX. With wood, metal, leather, and available faux suede trim throughout the cabin. As is typical of ultra-luxury cars, the DBX is pretty much loaded with features out of the gate. Its optional extras come in the form of a deep customization program that allows buyers to tailor DBX to their exact specification. The DBX comes standard with a 12.3-inch fully digital gauge cluster customizable ambient lighting, three-zone climate control, and heated front and rear seats. Its top options include ventilated front seats, a heated steering wheel, 
and a variety of even fancier cabin materials. Rear seat space is ample, with plenty of knee and headroom for adult occupants. The DBX does include popular features, such as Apple CarPlay, built-in navigation, a 14-speaker audio system, several USB ports, and 12-volt charging outlets. Android Auto is not available. Safety and driver assistance features include, standard front and rear parking sensors, standard 360-degree camera system, standard automatic high beams. The DBX safety crash test rating has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, the DBX major downsides are, surprisingly absent of lane keeping assist. Pricey options run the cost up quickly. The infotainment system is a little behind the times. Although the Porsche Cayenne range has been the dynamic benchmark for performance SUVs for years, the competition keeps getting tougher. Now, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo Coupe, with its less practical cabin, but more stylish sloping roofline, also needs to contend with the new Audi RS Q8 and Lamborghini Urus. Porsche is confident that the Cayenne Turbo Coupe still has what it takes to fend off tough rivals. The Cayenne Turbo Coupe delivers sports car-like in addition to its practical SUV shape. Powered by 4.0-liter twin-turbocharged V8, 541 horsepower, and 567 pound-feet of torque. Paired to 8-speed automatic transmission, with all-wheel drive. And sprint 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Top speed, 177 miles per hour. Futuristically luxurious, the interior of the Porsche Cayenne Turbo Coupe is as visually impressive as the SUV's performance is thrilling. Build quality is exceptional, and the cabin is completely customizable. Porsche allows you to individually select everything, from the interior trim to the seatbelt colors, to the surface materials. It features a responsive, and easy-to-operate 12.3-inch touchscreen, mounted in the middle of its dashboard. Every Cayenne Turbo has Porsche Connect Plus, which includes Apple CarPlay, Wi-Fi hotspot, and navigation. However, the system still doesn't support Android Auto. Safety and driver assistance features include, standard forward collision warning, and automated emergency braking. Available adaptive cruise control, with stop and go technology. And available lane keeping assist. Cayenne Turbo Coupe Safety Crash Test Rating, has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, Cayenne Turbo Coupe major downsides are, quite a few optional features should be standard, given the price tag. Gloss black interior panels can look dirty almost immediately.
while Mercedes may have been one of the first to create this kind of vehicle, with the GLE 63 S. But Audi has cracked an SUV that thinks it's a supercar segment. This is the most powerful crossover, Audi has ever produced. The RS Q8 comes standard, with a 4.0-liter twin-turbocharged V8 engine, making 591 horsepower, with a standard Quattro all-wheel drive system. To put all that power to the ground, it has an upgraded suspension, and special brakes, to ensure it handles stops. That monster engine gives the RS Q8 the legs to run, with other ultra-exclusive SUVs, such as Lamborghini Urus, and Porsche Cayenne Turbo Coupe. Powered by a 4.0-liter twin-turbo V8, producing 591 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. Paired to 8-speed Tiptronic automatic transmission with Quattro all-wheel drive system and Sprint 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Top speed, 155 miles per hour. Audi is not known for building cars with ugly interiors, and the RS Q8 is yet another example of a car with a modern, attractive, ergonomic cabin. The quad zone climate control system is handled by an 8.6 inch touchscreen display, while a 10.1 inch touchscreen handles infotainment, and yet another 12.3 inch display is used for driver info. The Audi Virtual Cockpit Digital Gauge Cluster MMI interface have certain RS-specific displays that can show information, such as torque and power output, lap times, and G-forces. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, navigation, and Sirius XM satellite radio are all standard. The front seats are comfortable and supportive. It features both heating and ventilation, but massaging is also available for a premium. Overall, the cabin is built to the highest standard and features the latest tech. Safety and driver assistance features include standard automated emergency braking with pedestrian detection, available lane departure warning with lane keeping assist, and available adaptive cruise control. RSQ8 safety crash test rating has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, the RSQ8 major downsides are the infotainment system can be distracting to use. The fuel economy isn't great. Elegant, sporty, and AMG typical on road driving dynamics. The performance crossover rides on an air suspension, with adaptive damping, for an even smoother experience. Based on the newest GLE class, 
This is the version with the sloped roofline, and the most powerful AMG crossover SUV. The new Mercedes-AMG GLE 63 S Coupe, is a special vehicle. Powered by a 4.0-liter bi-turbo V8. Connected to a 48-volt EQ boost electric system, which adds 21 horsepower and 184 pound-feet. Total output comes to 603 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. Paired to 9-speed automatic transmission with 4-matic all-wheel drive system. And sprint 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Top speed, 174 miles per hour. The GLE 63S Coupe has a sporty but elegant interior, with excellent room front and rear. Rich Nappa leather covers the well-bolstered seats, which sport an AMG badge on their backrests. There are also several AMG-specific features packed in, such as a sport steering wheel, with aluminum shift paddles, and aluminum accents. The cabin is spacious, and the seats are comfortable, and supportive. The system in the GLE 53 Coupe features dual 12.3-inch displays, which are the centerpieces of the interior, that houses the MBUX interface. The system is controlled by natural voice recognition, a touchpad controller, steering wheel controls, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Sirius XM satellite radio, are all standard, while a 4G Wi-Fi is optional. Safety and driver assistance features include, standard forward collision warning, and automated emergency braking. Available adaptive cruise control, with stop-and-go technology. Available lane departure warning, and lane keeping assist. GLE 63S Coupe Safety Crash Test Rating, has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, GLE 63S Coupe major downsides are, roofline compromises backseat headroom, and too expensive. Bentley was the first automaker, that opened up a new level of ultra-luxurious SUVs. It may sound hard to believe, but it's been five years since the Bentley Bentayga, arrived on the scene. Since its arrival, the competition has done its best to respond, but the Bentayga has more than held its ground. But like every vehicle, a midlife update is necessary in order to keep it competitive, and Bentley is very determined to cement the Bentayga status. This ultra-luxury SUV, offers all the comfort of a leather-filled parlor, plus plenty of tech features, a trio of powerful engine choices. The Bentley Bentayga, is undoubtedly one of the most exclusive SUVs on the planet.
powered by a 4.0-liter twin-turbo V8, producing 542 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque. Paired 8-speed automatic transmission with all-wheel drive and sprint 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds. Top speed, 180 miles per hour. Filled with rich smelling leathers, real wood trim, and glitzy metal accents, the Bentayga's cabin stays true to its luxury branding. Bentley allows buyers to customize just about everything. While the rear seat doesn't feel as lavish as that of the Bentayga's key rival, the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, it still offers plenty of space for adult passengers to stretch out. Several different colors of leather upholstery are available. All Bentayga models come standard, with a 10.9-inch infotainment screen, with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, navigation integration. A 12-speaker stereo is standard, but you can opt for Naeem's 20-speaker premium audio system. Safety and driver assistance features include, standard automated emergency braking, with pedestrian detection, available lane departure warning, with lane keeping assist, available adaptive cruise control, and night vision system. Bentega Safety Crash Test Rating has not yet been revealed. In conclusion, the Bentega major downsides are, optional equipment is very expensive. Standard rear bench seat is a bit flat and plain. Well, here it is, resplendent in rose gold and alpine green. And to talk us through in more detail is the Director of Design, Stefan Silaf. Hello, Stefan. Hello, Vicky. Great to see you. Lovely to see you too. Now, there's another dazzling design from you, and yet you've managed to maintain such a presence. How have you done this? Yeah, I had the privilege with the great Bentley design team uh, to work mainly on the front and also on the rear of the Bentayga 2 and yeah, do some significant, significant change, but also improvement. So looking at the front, how does that differ from the first generation Bentayga? So we literally changed more or less everything from the A-pillar forward, and starting maybe with the bigger picture, the proportion, we had the chance to uh, widen the stance of the car for 10 millimeter on each side, talking a little bit about measurement, we also had the chance to lift the bonnet for 30 mm to give a more upright and prominent statement of our face, let's say. And those headlamps are pretty mesmerizing as well. Yeah, I mean, we had the chance with all the changes in getting the front more upright, also to change the fenders, and we integrated elliptical lights and also look at the details, this crystal cut glass theme we have been establishing also in the Continental GT and the Flying Spur, gives a certain kind of family feeling to the Bentayga 2 and the rest of our portfolio. Now I notice as well that you've brought that through to the rear and this is a new back end so if you can talk us through this that would be lovely. Yeah I mean the rear end is really really doing a, a big step also with regard to the stands again the wheels came out also in the rear for 10 millimeter but we also had the chance to change the trunk lid into a kind of wraparound theme and really emphasize the width and the, yeah, the statement altogether of the rear end of the car uh, with 
doing a really, really wide layout of the architecture, also the horseshoe, and then integrating these elliptic lights with very typical Bentley, also lovely details. It does look a lot wider, is it? Or is it just magic from you? It is not wider. It is, I wouldn't say magic, but it is a part of our, let's say, professional business to make things look really more and more advanced and this was one of our little tricks we were playing let's say. Now in profile it also looks a bit longer so is that another special Stefan trick? Uh, again yeah I mean the overall length and also the wheelbase hasn't changed. Uh, I suppose the, the effect uh, arrives from the fact that the bonnet is longer and then to counterbalance the, the, the kind of prominent front end we had the chance also to work on the rear spoiler also for aerodynamic reasons, but it also is stretching the overall length of the car visually. Well, visually it already looks fast and I'm sure it will be. What about inside the car? What about the Again, major changes? A, an exercise we really, really enjoyed. It's always is and has been a lovely interior. And we have now the chance to change the big things. We had a chance to work on the seats, on the door trim, on the dashboard and on the centre console. It does look like another exquisite work of art. What about the materials? Can you talk us through a few more details? Yeah, before I go to the materials, there have been two major changes in the dashboard. Uh, so the whole, let's say, dashboard became more digital. So we integrated a digital uh, combi instrument and also a 10.3 inch uh, digital display in the center console. And Chris is going to talk a little bit more in detail about all the technical uh, effects of, of, of these devices. Yeah, and coming back to your question on the, on the, on the materials, uh, i give you a few examples. One of the things I really love is this um, decoration part over here in the door trim, in the dashboard. Uh, it's a um, diamond polished 3D aluminium. And we're talking a little bit also about sustainability in this case. We have two more new veneers, sustainable veneers, uh, introduced as well. Uh, the Koa and, and the Crown Cut, Crown Cut Walnut. Um, on focusing on details in the door trim, in the seats, we have um, the kilting. And it is in the seats also accompanied with a new micro piping so it gives a very very modern statement and yeah all together i would say the combination of the materials of the colors a big step forward into fresh and modern statement lovely thank you so much indeed for that first look stefan my pleasure Vicky. thank you so we have had a look at the surfaces now and let us ask chris to dig a little bit deeper and go beneath Chris, can you talk us through the cabin, please, from yes. your point of view? Uh, of course, yes. So we'll start with the back of the rear part of the car because, as I said, one of the key objectives was to improve on the comfort of the passengers and really look to get that, enhance what we had as a really high level of comfort, take it one step further. So with some innovative work with seats, new seating arrangements, uh, we've increased the uh, the, the leg room for the passengers, in particular on the four seat variant with different uh, positioning of the occupant, we've got up to 100 millimetres additional knee room which is really good and really helps set off that sort of limousine experience in the back of the car. And with the five seat we've introduced cooling in the seats as well as heating in the seats. There's also for the rear occupants uh, an enhancement in the touchscreen remote with a five inch screen now with more functionality that allows the people in the rear of the car to have much more control over the climate, over the, 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 the music that's playing and some of the important information about what the car's doing, uh, which is great for just entertainment generally in the back of the car. So the rear cabin has more comfort and even more control, particularly for children who, yes. will, who will love that. Yes. And for the customers who want to drive rather than be driven, what can they expect up front? Well, it's a formidable driving machine, as we know, anyway. Um, so what we wanted to do was really give it an extra boost in terms of the technology so that for the, this new Bentayga, we had a step forward in terms of the actual um, infotainment. It's all of the uh, digital and electronic equipment in the car. As Stefan said, a new touch screen in the, in the centre part of the fascia with the very latest infotainment system, much more intuitive to use with many, many more features compared to the, uh, the first Bentayga and a 
digital combi display, but also importantly for the real driving experience, a head-up display has been enhanced with more information for the driver, um, uh, real-time traffic information, for example, and uh, road condition data on the head-up display, which just makes it all enhances that whole driving experience. So when it comes to connectivity, how much of a connected car is it? So every new Bentayga comes with an embedded SIM. That means that we can connect the car instantly to my Bentley services and with the launch of the new Bentayga brings a new set of services for connected car. Uh, we expect to see about tenfold increase in the use of such connected services, which is a real step of technology boost um, and what the customers really demand from us. Um, and with that, that means that all of the additional information, so a download of NAV, updates, for example, points of interest, um, and importantly, additional speech recognition as well for the driver, uh, extra functionality through speech, which makes the whole driving experience more safe as well. Yeah, absolutely, and that's all becoming so much more important every yeah. day. And what about technology across the rest of the car? So, again... Um, something that was already brilliant, we wanted to make even better, uh, which was as, as a, uh, you know, in, interesting as, as I said earlier. Um, so we launched the car with the 4 litre V8, uh, 550 PS engine, which is extremely efficient um, so we, and is our biggest selling uh, engine in Bentayga. Um, so we're really pleased to do that. Also, the uh, innovative 48 volt body control system is, has, is on the vehicle and has been enhanced with, for example, as Stefan said, the di difference in the track of the vehicle, that extra 20 millimetres makes all the difference to just improve what was already great, just one step forward in terms of steering feel and lateral control of the car. Um, and you mentioned earlier the headlamps, for example, each one 48 LEDs in each headlamp with um, adjustable modes which are automatic for different driving conditions which really help with the night driving experience but equally doesn't dazzle the oncoming traffic which is really important. Now you mentioned that at launch we will have the V8 so when can we expect the hybrid which will be part of the Beyond 100 strategy that Adrian spoke about earlier? Yeah the, the hybrid will be available through the rest of this year so in the major markets where we see hybrid as really important the UK of course Europe uh, Japan and the USA and then with other markets the hybrid will be introduced in 2021. Lovely, thank you very much. I look forward to driving them back. Yeah, yeah. Hello and welcome. We are in LA and this is the brand new RSQ8, the absolute highlight of the RS initiative in 2019 and a prime example for our RS philosophy, which means you get both the sportiest and most exciting SUV from Audi and at the same time maximum comfort and everyday usability. We have an 8-cylinder with 4-litre TFSI, 600 horsepower and 800 newton meters of torque. You can go from 0 to 100 km per hour in only 3.8 seconds and we reach a top speed of 305 km per hour. And by the way, this is the fastest SUV at the legendary Nordschleife racetrack, also known as the Green Hell. But how did we manage the Nordschleife in only 7 minutes and 42 seconds? This is faster than a lot of sports cars. Every RS model is designed and tested by our dedicated engineers and our professional race drivers. For optimal performance, you just have to activate one of the two RS modes by pushing the button directly on the steering wheel. Together with our partner Audi of America, we will roll out the greatest high performance portfolio in history. Next year, we will launch the RS6, the RS7, the R8 and the RSQ8. The RSQ8 comes with the same 48 volt mild hybrid system that we successfully introduced with the RS6 and RS7. Before I uh, explain the RSQ8 specific elements, I would like to say a few words um, in advance to the Q8 in general. And I would like to start with the roof architecture. The roof architecture is quite unique on the Q8 because we have frameless doors, this is coupe style, and uh, we have a quite chopped roof. And this chopped roof starts already on the A-post 
and then stays quite horizontal until the um, rear end, rear passenger seats. And then to get sportiness, we put a quite fast seat post against it. And the special thing about it, it's outstanding in the segment, so quite iconic. You can re clearly recognize the Q8 from 100 meters away and it combines in a perfect way functionality with sportiness. And of course this re recipe we kept for the RS Q8, but we found a few elements which um, exaggerate uh, actually this thing and emphasize that this is the RS Q8 now, the top of the line model. And there I just want to pronounce these, these wheels. Optional, we will have 23 inch wheels on this car and this is just amazing. This is for us designers like a show car actually. And uh, what, what comes on top, the track on the front is 10 mil wider and on the rear 5 mil wider. So the stance of the RSQ8 is just outstanding as well. Uh, another thing which is specific on the RSQ8 is, here you can see now the version with full body color. But it's also possible to get the RSQ8 with a contrast paint. Then the rocker is painted in contrast color. And these wheel lips here stay in body color. And this is also specific for the RSQ8. Okay, on the rear end, three things are very, very important on the RSQ8. First, I would like to emphasize the um, diffuser area, which is very, very big, very large. And what you see clearly here are the exhaust pipes, which are typical RS. These oval um, exhausts um, stand out for our, for our RS models and they are clearly visible. This is uh, the main element. The second element actually is this area here, where you can see these slots under the lights. And um, these slots are a little bit familiar with our RS4 and our RS5 models. Um, where these slots are beside the rear lights and here they are under the rear lights. And this detail is a little bit a link to our past, to our famous IMSA GTO race car out of the 80s. Um, and obviously they emphasize the width of the car and from 100 meters away you will clearly see the RSQ8. Um, the last detail which is important on the rear end is uh, the spoiler which is extending the roof and has this typical RS wave. And also this is clearly visible as a RS sign. Already the standard face form from the Q8 is quite characterful because we have this huge octagon single frame, we have this black mask, we have this characterful light architecture and this makes already the standard face quite expressive. But of course the RS Q8 is even bolder and this has a reason. We made the grille slightly wider um, and this fits perfect to our RS model. And we left um, this chrome frame around the grille and we kept out of the car. And this is a, has a reason because from the design we follow the strategy that our RS models are a little bit uh, motorsport linked uh, and they are designed more pure. And actually this fits also to the RS6, R7 where you can find the same design language basically. Um, what we kept actually is the honeycomb grille which is a little bit rougher and which is um, including the sensors we need for the driver assistance systems. So in general a quite prominent grille which sticks out and is special compared to the standard Q8. Um, through the mask um, we emphasize the side air intakes um, because they are surrounded by body color and they are very very uh, big because we need actually the air which goes through it and they are pronounced. And uh, in general, this face is very expressive and shows clearly this is our RSQ8. If we're talking about the RSQ8, we're talking about the top spearhead of the total RS portfolio. This car combinates the perfect design of an SUV coupe with the everyday suitability of an SUV and the driving performance of a real RS model. So if we talk about the design of this car, design follows function. So we have widened wheel arches, we have big air intakes in the front, we have a rear top spoiler and of course we have a big diffuser. So this car is not just for the everyday use but it's also for the performance use. That means we have the big V8 engine with 600 horsepower and 800 Newton meter. This is combined with an RS specific sport suspension, a Quattro sport drivetrain and of course an electromechanical rolling stabilization. All that means that this car, despite its size, can be moved really fast. 
Regarding the everyday suitability, there are three main items to be considered. First, the RSQ8 features an all-wheel steering. Second, it's also equipped with an RS-specific air suspension. And third, it is also possible with these items and the Quattro Sport drivetrain to drive 305 kilometers maximum speed.